Hello dear students, I am Dr. Godbola Mahendra Tukaram, welcoming you all in my super lecture second that is Indian Stratigraphy and Classical Geology. I am going to publish the same sequel of or the next sequel of my lecture on the same subject. This lecture will be very fruitful. So, as far as the concern of the various kinds of the state level examinations like the CSIR net combined geoscientist examinations which is going to uh, conduct uh, the, the, the same examination will be conducted by the geological survey of India the upcoming examination for the upcoming examination also the same lecture will be very important so as per as the concern of the gate examination gate examination you will find the various uh, kinds of uh, the questions and its solution in my present lecture therefore this sequel of my super lecture will be very fruitful very fruitful to all of you so what will be the theme of my today's lecture that i will describe in very brief what will be the scheme of my this uh, super lecture second that is uh, the indian stratigraphy and uh, classical geology what will be the scheme of my talk what will be the scheme so in previous lecture we were discussed about the various kinds of uh, the metallogenic epochs which were associated with the cretons and the mobile belts but in this lecture we are going to talk about the various kinds of uh, the formation or formation in the indian subcontinent like what are the various types of uh, the volcanic provinces that is the deccan volcanic provinces and gondwana formations where the gondwana is located in the different parts of the indian subcontinent that gondwana gondwana or the gondwanian gondwanian rocks and the formations those formations are supposed to be the exposed and those are confined to various kinds of the traps maybe the godavari godavari mahanadi godavari mahanadi koyal and the other rivers has a rich source of the formation of the coal deposits coal deposits will be discussed coal deposits the discussion on the coal depositions will be the silent features of uh, this uh, lectures and the deccan volcanic provinces along with the deccan volcanic provinces we will also discuss about the various kinds of uh, the other uh, epochs or the formations particularly the raj mahal trap and the cenozoic and the quaternary sediments quaternary geology will be also discussed in the same presentation so as far as the concern of uh, the peninsular knees and one more topic i would like to discuss here uh, that uh, the geological survey of india has already been given the status uh, as a, a national monument that peninsular knees peninsular knees was treated as a, a national monument national monuments or the antiquity national antiquity so this was a this discussion were over in the first super lecture in this second super lectures i will also discuss about uh, one of the portion of the deccan volcanic provinces that is the lonar crater 
and the lunar crater is also one of the recognized site as a national monuments and those national monuments were treated as the uh, most important monuments or the historical monuments of the antiquity by the geological survey of india near about 34 geological sites has been recognized by the geological survey of india as a national monuments or the national antiquity and out of which lonar is also a most important uh, uh, national monuments and that is located in the our state particularly in the bundana you know about the lunar crater and that we will discuss about how it is unrelated to the volcanic activities coming to the part of again the peninsular uh, indian subcontinent or the peninsular region of the india which is supposed to be the part of the deccan that that uh, that uh, that the, uh, the peninsular region or the peninsular rocks uh, which may we will have a different kinds of the cratons those cratons may be the western dharwar craton that wdc and the eastern dharwar cratons which is separated by the close fed granite you are already known about the close fed granite how the that 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 that, uh, that plutonic body which is going to separating the western and the eastern region of these uh, uh, craton as a dharwar craton Coming to the part of, uh, and this Darwar Craton has the most important exposures uh, as uh, the two portions. Uh, first of all, the foundations or the best, which is known as a uh, Sarbur group, and the Sarbur group is followed by the different kinds of uh, uh, the Darwarian uh, super groups, that is in Baba Budan group and the Chitra Durga group and uh, at the bottom so we may have the oldest rocks near about uh, or the more than 3000 million year old rocks and followed by the different kinds of the discontinuities and the discontinuities is going to separating the uh, the baba budan group as a lower formations followed by the chitra durga group as a upper formations and uh, the other uh, most important charnokites particularly that ang charnokites or the ang plutonic rocks uh, may be exposed in the uh, other or the top most portions of the same region so this is all about the western dharwar craton and the eastern dharwar cratons here we will find that uh, how the baba budan group this is a baba budan group and this is uh, the uh, different kinds of uh, uh, the uh, chitra durga group this is in chitra durga and this is a baba buddha chitra durga and baba buddha the original starting rock of the western dharwar craton is already known to you how that baba budan group and the chitra durga group uh, which are separated by means of the discontinuities and various kinds of uh, uh, the lithological associations which are also uh, supporting to the Kalaspora formations uh, and uh, the Alamphua formations which are supposed to be made up of by the different kinds of the quartz and the orionite and the discontinuity is separating the Mulegiri formations and the Venivilas formations and the banded iron formations are also a silent features of a, a Hiriyur formations. So this is also the original stratigraphy of the western Dharwar Platon. Coming to the part of the lithostratigraphy of the Mahakoshal uh, group or the Mahakoshal uh, group has been made up of the different kinds of the Slimanabad formations and the Slimanabad formations which is in, uh, separated from the Persu formations by means of uh, the different kinds of uh, a, a Juvian uh, fault which is separated and uh, then the Mahakoshal supergroup or the upper Mahakoshal, Mahakoshal supergroups may have a Dhandruva formations or uh, the uh, intrusives, uh, Dudhamaya formations and the intrusives may also occur in the upper region of the uh, Mahakoshal supergroup. Coming to the part of uh, the uh, Mahakoshal supergroups in detail that gold mineralization gold mineralization gold mineralization is uh, the silent features of uh, this region that gold mineralization 
gold mineralizations in the eastern parts of the late Archean Mahakoshal belt is in observed in the sulfidic chert associated with the banded ferruginous chert that is BFC and the quartz carbonate sulfides veins and the quartz carbonates veins implaced in the argillites and the Gruyere case. At this late Archean Mahakoshal greenstone belt of the central India. This Mahakoshal greenstone belt in the central India and exists in the north, north, east, south, south, east, west, and uh, which shows uh, which has been covered near about 500 kilometer uh, for the area has been covered by uh, in these formations in the Madhya Pradesh. And those are exposed in the veins and a and in few kilometers, nearly in 50 kilometers, occurrences of the gold in the belt and come to be light nearly a, a, a nearly a decade ago, nearly a, a decade ago. Uh, the formation has uh, known uh, to us by means of the Geological Survey of India, and therefore that uh, the Mahakoshal supergroup or the Mahakoshal group is known for the gold mineralization. Coming to the part of the Vindian supergroup, the Vindian supergroup is also a one of the protrusive uh, platform or basins, and we know that we are having a various kinds of uh, the uh, parts of the Vindian supergroups, and one of which the Mahakoshal is also a one part that is the Chitravati formations, which is separated by means of the Ankur formative, following by the Agori formations, Persuade formations, and other intrusive rocks are supposed to be occurring in this region. And this is the parts of the Mahakoshal supergroup or the Mahakoshal belt. Coming to the part of the next part of uh, the Vindian supergroup, that is the the Vindian supergroup is divided into the different formations and that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the width of the each formation which is also varies in Kaimur and Reva and the Bhandar, these are the formation of the upper Vindian supergroups and we are interested in the Kaimur formation. So what is the Kaimur group? That Kaimur is supposed to be a measuring about a 400 meters and which is thicker and lies uncomfortable over the deformed and then eroded Rohtas limestones and the Semri group. So this is the Semri group. And here we will have different kinds of deformation of the same groups that is uh, the Dio land formation where the fault is also lies uh, below the Dio land formations and the Arangi formations and uh, Kasrahat limestones and, and uh, the Dio now formations are also situated to the southern regions. And this Kaimur region or the Kaimur group is divided into the lower Kaimur and the upper Kaimur. The lower Kaimur has been made up of the Sasanam sandstones and the other uh, uh, Markundi sandstones. And then upper Kaimur is further divided into the Bizagad cells, scrap sandstones and the Dhandruval sandstone. Dhandruval quartzites are the for the matching match the following there was a question in the to get examination for matching the different kinds of uh, the formations and out of which dhandruval was one of the option in the gate examination so the dhandruval is a name of the dam and this is uh, that the dhandruval is uh, uh, the name is given by means of the uh, the that uh, the dhandruval sandstones in the U up and that Kaimur group comprises the unmetamorphosed and gently dippings and sub-horizontal beds of the sandstones and the cells. Sandstones and the cells you will find in this uh, Kaimur formation. This Kaimur formation which is exposed in the, as a, the, the this is a, treated as in mesoprotrusic upper Kaimur groups consisting of in Bizagat cells and scrap sandstones and the Dhandrol sandstones. Dhandrol actually which was a, a name of the dam. Nearly a tidal sand and the flat sand bar faces are associated with these Kaimur formations and uh, that the uh, detrital modes of the Dhandrols and the scrap sandstones and the quartz aronites to the sublithic and the other 
uh, petrographical data suggest that the depositions of the upper Paimur group sandstones took place in, in humid climates and was derived from in mixed provinces. So this is the classification of the upper Vindian as a Kaimur group and that the foundation of the Kaimur group or the lower Vindian is known as a Semri and which is uh, uh, having a 760 to 3,555 3, meter thickness and the lower Kaimur formations are in, omitted by the Markundi and the Jamul Falls according to the Prakasham and other according to the Prakash and other workers. Coming to the next portion of uh, the Indian subcontinent's uh, uh, eastern uh, geology or the eastern uh, craton, Indian eastern cratons that is the Chota Nagpur granite knees or this is also known as a, a CGGC that is the Chota Nagpur granite knees. Actually, geologically, this is Chota Nagpur granite knees complex and the parts of the Singhabhu mobile belt. Actually, this is a part of the Singhabhu mobile belt. Here we will have the Singhabhu group, and the entire northern region has been occupied by the Chota Nagpur granite knees. And this is a square box shows that the study area, and in this region. Uh, the different kinds of the Chota Nagpur uh, rocks has been exposed. So again coming to the as a solution for the previous examination question and its answer as a Chota as a Chhattisgarh Basin. The Chhattisgarh Basin was also a, that the, the Chhattisgarh Basin is different, uh, Chhattisgarh Basin is having a different formations and as far as the concern of the mineralizations and uh, uh, that uh, the potential of the mineralization because the Chhattisgarh, uh, uh, Chhattisgarh uh, resources have an immense potential for the investments of the mining and getting the mineral based industries and, and, and uh, generating an employment because there are various kinds of the natural resources uh, are supposed to be associated with the Chhattisgarh basins and then Chhattisgarh uh, which is supposed to be a nest or the nestle atops to the world's largest kimberlite area. That kimberlite, you know about the kimberlite, that uh, the largest area of the kimberlite uh, and the different kinds of uh, the diamonds are supposed to be associated with the kimberlites. And the eight blocks have been uh, demarcated for the diamond exploration, that uh, the kimberlite is most important uh, uh, diamond in this region. The Chhattisgarh supergroups nearly has a different kinds of the groups that is Singora groups, Chandarpur groups, Raipur group and the other Kharsia groups which are also situated in the Chhattisgarh group. In addition to this, the, this is supposed to be the Mesozoic or the Mesoprotozoic uh, region which is having one near about uh, near about the 1450 to 1000 million year, year back the Chhattisgarh formations were came into existence came into the existence the next formation is a Rajmal trap actually the Rajmal trap has been uh, which has been developed or which has been created by the a Cherubilian plume which was situated uh, far from the southern uh, uh, or the south uh, western side of the south western side of the uh, uh, US that the southern US uh, eastern region western region shows the location of the Kerguelian plumes and this was uh, the main region for the formation of uh, uh, this Rajmal trap or the Rajmal a volcanic activities believed to have created by the 90th ridge and the large volume basaltic uh, volcanism that is a that is a large volume of the basaltic volcanisms that erupted in the early Cretaceous and in our Maharashtra we may have the late Cretaceous that uh, DVP 
DBP is a late Cretaceous and the Raj Mahal trap is a early Cretaceous and in eastern Indian continent margins. So this is an India, this is an Indian map and here in this eastern margin we may have the Raj Mahal trap and this Raj Mahal trap is very famous for uh, these volcanic uh, or the late, uh, the early Cretaceous and uh, its equivalents are supposed to be situated in the Australia and the other uh, regions of the world, particularly in the Indian Ocean also. And the Ras Mal Trap is in volcanic igneous provinces of the eastern India, covering the part of the Jharkhand, West Bengal and the Meghalaya. In the Jharkhand, West Bengal and the Meghalaya, we may find the occurrences of the Ras Mal Trap, the Ras Mal Hills or the Jharkhand. It is in a type of these provinces and multiple layer are solidified by the uh, lava that multiple layers of the solidified lava made the one 608 meters uh, thick to 1995 uh, feet Raj Mahal traps which is in dippings near about 2 to 5 degree towards the northeast. This is all about the Raj Mahal formations where the uh, Dubrajpur formation and the Dubrajpur formation which is also shows a uh, different kinds of uh, uh, the thickness and the lithological associations are also varies and Dubrajpur formation is followed by the Katangiri formation or the Katangiri bed at a top and then Rajmal, Rajmal formations may be made up of the Dubrajpur formation as well as in Katangiri formations and those are the value fossils data shows that. So this is the region or this is the southern America and this is in western region uh, particularly this is the eastern region of uh, or this is an African subcontinent. Here we may have a, a Keru Julian Islands and then Keru Julian Islands was the main reason for the rifting and the formation of the volcanic plume or that volcanic plume was the main reason for the formations of the Rajmal Trap. Coming to the next portion of uh, the our presentation that is in Gondwana particularly uh, actually we are having a different kinds of the occurrences of the Gondwanian rocks in the peninsular regions particularly in the various kinds of the rifts of the rivers in the rifts particularly maybe the Godavari, Mahanadi and so on, Koyal and, Koyal and so on but here that in case of the Gondwana in the extra peninsular regions the Gondwanan, the Gondwanian rocks which are also mainly occurring in the, particularly that lower Gondwanian rocks may occur or may confine in the different parts of uh, the uh, northwestern region of uh, the extra peninsular region, particularly in the Panjal traps in the Kashmir and which is designated as a, a Nishit Bagh and a Nishant Bag bed and that beginnings to this bed marks the emergences of the continental phase of the Kashmir's during the early parts and this bed is uh, known for the mammal formations and those uh, volcanic flows and the intertrapians which covered the different kinds of the mammal formations and those mammal formations may have a dark colored tufaceous cells that mammal formations may occur in the dark colored tufaceous cells and it is a main constituent of the uh, Nishant Bagh bed and that Nishant Bagh bed is known for the mammals. Mammals are the mammal beds. And those mammal formations are mainly composed of the tufaceous suits and so on and these beds contain different kinds of the plant fossils that is in uh, lycopods and so on and then the, the first gold volume insects from the India which are also reported from the extra peninsular region of uh, the uh, different uh, parts of the northwestern region of the India. Coming to the part of the next, uh, next uh, most important uh, aspect of uh, the Deccan volcanic provinces that is in Lameda formations. Actually the Lameda formations and the Bag builds uh, are known for the different kinds. That Lameda is uh, supposed to be known for the intertrapians which is famous for the intertrapian and uh, occurrences of the different kinds of uh, uh, the infra and the intertrapian sediments along with uh, the important for the Cretaceous tertiary boundary and the dinosaur skeleton remains found in these uh, uh, last 150 years upper Cretaceous uh, Lameda formation is an exposed in the horizontal shelves 
all of the fringe area of the Deccan traps, particularly in the peninsula of India. So this is the portion of the flood basalt uh, provinces or the Deccan volcanic provinces. And various kinds of the environments of the depositions also shows that that uh, the green sand stones is an, uh, interpreted as a braxiated uh, stream and deposits and then lower limestones characterized by the braxiated in the uh, shrinkage cracks and the other uh, formation particularly that is uh, the fauna and the flora which is a diverse assemblages of the aquatic and the semi-aquatic and the terrestrial fauna and the flora including the other kinds of the uh, uh, the complete uh, fish uh, remains has also been uh, recovered from this uh, lamata formations and those are exposed in the different regions particularly in the western most uh, that is uh, uh, Balsinor Jabua basins. The next basin is known for or the next part of the Lameta formations uh, or the Lametas are exposed in the Jabalpur basins, in the Sagar basin of the MP and the easternmost uh, that is uh, the Ambikapur or the Amarkantak basins uh, and the outermost or the southernmost uh, that is uh, Nanda Dongargao basin where the different kinds of the Lameta formations can be uh, recovered. These are the most important sites from where we may uh, record, we may, uh, we may find various kinds of the Lameta formations. Those are the sites, particularly Dayapars and uh, Angers and uh, this is a Balsinur and uh, Dodha, Kushi and the other regions particularly of the Maharashtra particularly the Nagpur region also we may have Nagpur and the Jabalpur regions are also having a different kinds of the Lameta formations and along with the Lameta formations that the other formations may also have the different kinds of the eggshells of the dinosaurs and the bones too has been recorded. This map shows that uh, the different kinds of the infrared or an inferred basins of the Lameta sediments, particularly uh, in the Gujarat, in MP, and in the other portions of the Indian subcontinent. So this is the lithostratigraphic succession of the Lameta rocks of the Namada basin, and those Lameta, those uh, those rocks are supposed to be or those formations are exposed in the Gujarat, in the Bagh, and in the Jabalpur. Uh, districts or in the Jabalpur uh, regions uh, where we may have a different kinds of uh, the uh, uh, remains of the organisms particularly the micro fossils as well as the dinosaurian egg cells and the dinosaurian egg cells this is in first in situ dinosaurs nest with the eggs which was found in the uh, Mohobani in the 1981 from the limestones and the other formations the analysis of these uh, uh, depositional environments of the strata of the bog and uh, that is a lameta and the infratrapians of the lower Cretaceous in the central India reveals that an, a, that is an epocontinental seaway and uh, so on. So this is the age, the bed of uh, the this, this vertebrates especially that the uh, PCM fauna and the other informations can be covered by this Mesozoic uh, region and this is in Lameta and the coeval formations of the peninsular India and uh, the other formations that is uh, the latest paleontological evidences based on the dinosaur fauna and the fish fauna which can also be shows that the this is connected to the uh, intratrap infratrapians and so on. So this is the next portion of our presentation that is a lithostratigraphic scheme of the western Maharashtra. That lithostrat lithostratigraphic uh, scheme of uh, the western Maharashtra uh, we may have, particularly that Sahyadri regions can be classified or uh, which can show that the Kalsuvai formations, Lonavala and the Y, and uh, as we move towards the uh, topmost region of the Mahabaleshwar from the uh, Saler, as we move towards the Saler, the thickness goes on, goes on decreasing, particularly here we may have the uh, uh, including the uh, corrected or the withered uh, strata that is 1500 uh, 
meter and in Mahabaleshwar we may have a 500, 600 meters. The lithostratigraphic schemes proposed for the western Maharashtra by the Gold Bullet Hall in the 1996 and suitably altered to the other workers. The solid formations consisting of the simple Piavo Hivo flows or the Firic or the Felspars or the Firic types of the northwestern region. So this is the lithostratigraphic scheme or this is a map of the western Maharashtra so where we may have a different kinds of deformation or the lithological associations. Coming to the part of the lithostratigraphy here the Jawahar formations or the Igatpuri or the Neral and the Thakurwadi or the Bhima Shankar which is uh, making a one class and that is in one formation which is known as a Kalsubai formations and the Khandela and the Bushe formation is Lonali, which is coming from the Lonavala category and the Y formations particularly the Poladpur formations, Ambenali formations, Mahabaleshwar and the and the uh, Panhala which is also coming from the super group of the Y so those are the formation and those are the super groups Y, Lonavala and the Kalsubai are the super groups of the different formations coming to the part of the individual uh, individual formations that Kalsubai is supposed to be a 2000 meter thick and uh, uh, which is uh, uh, which is marked by the occurrences of the GBP that is in uh, uh, giant plagioclase basalts and that is commonly present in the formations of the different kinds of the boundaries and which shows that uh, more than 80 percent of the manganese, uh, magnesium oxides uh, which is in manganese rich uh, flows are also occurring in the Thrimbak and the Malsej Ghat. This is a most important uh, uh, formation that is in Thrimbakeshwar formations which is one of the Jyotirlinga and here we may have a different kinds of the Malsej Ghat. The giant, base, giant plagioclase basalt uh, which is the uh, most important and which is also occurring in the Igatpuri formations and overlies the Java formations and occurs in the north western margins of the western Ghats in the Igatpuri. Coming to the part of the next uh, formation that is uh, Lonavala that is the Igatpuri particularly that the Kalsubai followed by the Lonavala and the Lonavala is also be belonging from uh, uh, this uh, in this category particularly the Bhimashankar formation is a Bhimashankar is also a one of the Jyotirlinga and which is which is around 225 meter in the thickness here we may have a different kinds of the thickness and uh, that uh, the mm, that the geologist has concluded that the non-avian dinosaurs uh, were demised by means of the volcanic provinces and then volcanogenic activities in the late Cretaceous period this region and then Y subgroup which is, all, which is also having a porphyritic and a fine ground mass texture. This is in porphyritic and the fine grand that is a finer grand mass textures which shows that the giant plagioclase basalt which is an also exposed here in these regions and the phenocryst plagioclase that plagioclase are occurring but those are the phenocryst plagioclase this is it for me this is in the most important characteristics of the lithology or the mineralogy of the Y super groups uh, that phenocryst of the plagioclase and these Poladpu formations is rest above the Busha formations and the mainly occur in the west to the Pune and the north in the Pune region also we may have the Polad formations or the Bushe formations which are also exposed in the Pune and the north to the Mahabali shore. So this is the next, next, next uh, point which is connected to the quaternary particularly the quaternary or the lithostratigraphy of the Thar deserts. Actually the Thar desert is situated in the northwestern region of uh, that Indian uh, subcontinent and then Thar Desert is in vast track covering near about uh, or over in 4000 square kilometer area has been uh, covered by this Thar Desert. Thar Desert has been covered near about uh, the 4000 square kilometer area in the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent and is in stretches for the western fringe of the Aoli mountains and in those rivers and much of this rainfall so actually 1,100 to 300 mm and though the eastern parts of the river source is in 
currently defined lies in the east in particularly 400 meter means annual rainfall here the variation of the rainfall is uh, also given and the Thar is one of the wettest region of the world which is also situated in the Thar regions and uh, this situation has an approach to in thinkings on the origin and the cause of the everyday of the Thar desert scripts the existence of such a uh, desertic terrain was the region for the aridity. This is a little, this is a map or the lithological map of uh, the Thar deserts where the different kind of formations we may find and actually in the Precambrian period or the pre, pre as a part of the basement of the Thar stratigraphy or the best that is the basal rocks those are supposed to be precambrian rocks particularly the mahalani rhyolites and the jodhpur uh, jodhpur sandstones that mahalani rhyolite which is associated with the delhi super group or the delhi fold belt and the delhi fold belt is supposed to be the basement or the nagur groups of the delhi super group and the delhi super group itself is a basement for the quaternary uh, geology or the quaternary lithostratigraphy of uh, the southwestern sectors and the eastern sectors are the northeastern sectors of the Thar Desert. This is the Thar Deserts, and that Thar Desert has been shown by the different. Uh, and this is in many physiographic uh, depressions shows that in the Thar Deserts, and there are the many longitudinal and the traverses. Uh, uh, parabolics and then obstacles dunes so we may find the different kinds of uh, uh, the geomorphological features particularly there are in many longitudinal and the transverse parabolics and uh, sub and obstacles dunes besides uh, in the barcons we may find the different kinds of uh, the uh, dunes you know what are the dunes and how the dunes can be shifted from a one place to another place by means of uh, the dunes dunes may be the crescent shaped dunes and other kinds of the dunes may be observed in the Thar region. This is the stratigraphic scheme of the Arvali supergroup. The Arvali supergroup has been classified by the Gupta, Sinaroy and the Roy Jakar in the 2002. They were given the Arvali supergroup scheme of the classification and various kind of the banded niche complex and the Bilwara supergroup and the Bilwara as well as the uh, Mewar niche was treated as a basement by the various kinds of the authors or the investigators. And as we move towards the upper portion or the uh, upper Arvali regions, we may have uh, Delwara granites or the, or the Darwal granites and the different kinds of uh, the other formations, particularly the Champanir group and the other formation are situated here. This is the Champanir group. This Arvali is divided into the different kinds of the amygdaloids, that local amygdaloids and quartzites, grids and in impure limestones are supposed to be the part of the classification of the Heron and then Gupta has treated the different kinds of the uh, Udaipur and the debris group and other uh, workers has given the classifications of uh, coming to the part of the Gupta Roy and the Roy and the uh, uh, Jackers the classification of uh, the Arvali supergroup the Gupta has considered the Mewar Nisi complex as a arcane rocks for, as a basement for the Arvali supergroup whereas the shadow water fishes and the deep water fishes are supposed to be the top most region which was classified by the Roy and et al. And he has also treated as a Mewar Nisik complex as a Archean. The Gupta and the Roy has considered the basement as a Mewar Nisik complex, but the Roy and the Chakar has considered a different basement as a banded Nisik complex and uh, that, uh, that shows the variation in the uh, classification and then locality which has uh, which is also varies particularly the lower middle and the upper portion of the uh, arvali supergroups may have a lowest formation that is in delwara formations and the jamar kotra formation is overlain on the delwara formation and the uh, lakhwali formations or the charol formation which is in topmost formation of the uh, upper uh, portion of the arvali supergroup according to the Roy and et al. 
so this is the arvalli delhi fold belt and this is a delhi delhi super group here we will have a delhi super group and delhi super group particularly delhi super group may have a that is in post delhi fold belt post delhi fold belt and other formation particularly that mewar formation are supposed to be situated towards the eastern side and the other portions that is in marwar which is supposed to be situated to the eastern sides that is in marwar and the mewar formations are uh, also most important formation particularly this is in western this is a western side of uh, western side formation of the marwar and uh, that is in paleo protrusions arvali super group is supposed to be a paleo protrusion this is the paleo protrusion this is a paleo protrusion paleo protrusions arvali is a paleo protrusions and which is uh, shows the deep seismic reflection studies were carried out by first time so the indian sheds along and 400 kilometers long profiles across this folds belts and delineate the crystal structures and the tectonic evolutions of the regions the tectonics has been studied and the delhi fold belt is one of the major protrusion orogenic belt in the world and the present study will enhance the understandings of the protrusion orogenic process involved in this region This is an Arvali craton. Arvali craton covers an area of an over in one lakh square kilometer, and which is having a different kinds of uh, which is uh, that the that composite Arvali craton is in bounds to the east by the Great Boundary Faults and the Vindhyan basins separate the Arvali from the Bundelkhand craton. These are the different parts portions of the Delhi that Arvali cratons. Here we will have the Marwar super group. This is a Marwar super group, and then Malani rhyolites, which are also exposed in the western regions. Iranpura granite, which we also found the Iranpura granite. This is a Iranpura granite, and the other formations are also exposed. The Arvali super group, that entire portion of uh, uh, we may see as a Delhi super group. Arvali super group, and the granitoids of the Delhi fold belts are also situated in the western side. the next portion of the presentation is a layered basic complexes at the layered basic complexes is in part of the pandian mobile belts and those are supposed to be neo archaeans and septampadi complexes in the southern indian metamorphosed and in anarthocytic complexes within the paleo in the in the palaghat kaveri suture zone or the pcs jet at the pcs jet which, which is also a part of the pandian mobile belt and septampadi complexes another major lithological associations of this marginal zone of the septam the and a bhavani or the methat or a uh, methau phallems layered basic complexes which is situated in this region particularly this is uh, the region where the uh, layered complexes we may have those are supposed to be the uh, rocks or the chromite and in silicate uh, chemistry shows that the septampadi complexes of the indian and which shows that or which might have been developed by the subduction related magmatism coming to the next portion of the presentation that is the zonation of the or the different zonation particularly we may have a different condolites and chanokites and so on and those are supposed to be the parts of the zonation of the eastern ghat mobile belt and eastern ghat mobile belt is also one of the most important protrusion mobile belt and which has been uh, classified or divided longitudinally and on the basis of the dominant type of the rock types particularly that lithological associations and those lithological associations we may find that western chanokite zones then which is denoted by the wcz and the second one is in western condolite zone that is wkz and the central magmatite zone which is a cmz and the eastern condolite zones so these all are the divisions of the and the divisions and the zones of the eastern ghat mobile belt that is eastern ghat eastern ghat mobile belt coming to the portion of these we will show the different kinds of uh, this is in western this is in western and eastern condolite zones this is in western and eastern condolite zones and then protrusions covered has been 
uh, shown in this region particularly around eastern ghat mobile belt and the western charnokite zone which is also exposed and those are supposed to be in transition zone transition zone is situated toward, towards the western side of the southwestern side of the eastern ghat mobile belt the western condolite zone is also one of the most important zones and that the western and the eastern condolite zone can shows or the western condolite zones which which has a dominant eastern or the koraput and a kalhandi kalhandi immediately in the eastern of the western that is uh, uh, condolite zones and the silurusier zones here we may have in a koraput and kalhandi region the uh, occurrences or the dominance of the western condolite zones extends to the uh, araku and a raigada or the bolangiri and uh, renagali and the uh, angul regions where the different kinds of uh, Uh, the marbles and other rocks may show the numerous basic ultra basic bodies included in the condolites between the rimal and the uh, angles so this is uh, coming to the part of the tectonic stratigraphic uh, or the tectonic framework of the indian subcontinent tectonic framework in my first presentation or the first episode of my talk which is also published on the youtube uh, under the theme of the super lecture uh, first on the indian stratigraphy and classical geology while discussion about the same lecture i have been spoken about the entire uh, tectonic framework of indian subcontinent in which i have been spoken about the various kinds of the cratons and mobile belts you may find the different kinds of the new proterozoic and the phenozoic covers so those are the new proterozoic and the phenozoic covers and in archean those all are the archeans may be the western dharwar cratons and the eastern dharwar craton those are the archeans followed by the arvali and the ttgs are also been discussed this generalized tectonic maps of the indian shields Uh, which shows that the how the tectonic uh, or the tectano stratigraphy or the tectonic framework of the india has been fringing one continents to the another one craton to the another craton and the one proterozoic belt to the another proterozoic basins coming to the saucer fold belt that is also denoted by the sfb and that saucer fold belt sfb is in central indian forms and the southern parts of the central indian tectonic zone that is the citz and that the central indian tectonic zone sometime which is also referred or which is also denoted as uh, the satpura that is satpura mobile belt that central indian tectonic zone is in satpura and that the saucer fold belt which is a knees basement that is the tbz the tirodi biotite knees and overlain by the supracrustal sequence of the quartz pilites and so on this is the geological map of the saucer mobile belt in which we may have different kinds of the formation particularly the northern central and the southern groups how those uh, the saucer uh, mobile belts are uh, undeformed or the lico granites are occurring then mungir group the next present the next point is in mungir or the rajgir those are supposed to be exposed in the bihar state of the uh, india and which is situated in the mungirs in the nalanda gaya district of the bihar and those are the mega fold structures of the rajgir belts and occurrences of the several hot springs in the vicinity has attracted the geologist for the for from the times when the geological mappings of the indian subcontinent was still in the uh, nascent stages medil quartz and other work particularly the krishnans in the 1956 and then masundar in the 1990 in the 1888 and so on that the other uh, chatarpur nizik terrains and the eastern peninsular india they were recycled the vindian systems and were arvali built and the bundelkhand granites could prominent source for the that is jhtr uh, granites this is in mafic volcanic uh, rocks which are the, which are covering the major components of the bif that is in uh, that is in banded uh, iron formation which is also prominent in this uh, 
this particularly that uh, the uh, Munger region. Coming to the Albaca subdivisions, that Albaca is uh, attributing to the Albaca subdivision was not specifically described, though it was uh, intercalated with the Albaca subdivisions occur only in the northeastern belt. The relationship between the two subdivisions was not yet to be elaborated, and both these subdivisions, particularly from the Heron and the other workers, has been uh, discussed. He also recognized that the Pakhal, that is an intra Pakhal, means the Albaca and the Pakhal formations has been. Uh, studied in detail that Albaca rocks formations of the Albaca belt uh, which are correlatable with those of the Pakhal belts and then lower uh, Somanpalli groups which is correlated with the uh, Malampalli groups but the view of the numerous faults traversing the sequences and the division into the formations because of the difficulty and then the various kinds of the lithological ensemble suggest that these near short to offshore environments evidences and the laminated shells gives in place to the tidal and the flat zone form represented by the chart dominant associations. So this is a Pranahita Godavari Basin in geological map of the Pranahita Godavari Basin shows in various kinds of the quaternary deposits. Coming to the part of the subdivisions of the uh, Pakhal uh, supergroup that uh, the uh, Subaraju, Srinivasa and the other worker has given the details of the stratigraphy of the Pakhal group. Coming to the Po formations, actually the Po formations which is a, uh, which is a, a litho column of the Po formations in which we may have a different kinds of the fossils and the cells which shows the different uh, uh, lineations and then ripple marks and other, other sedimentological features are also uh, recorded in the Po formations which is measured at the uh, Chichang village and the Chichang village is located in the Spiti Tahsil Lahul and the Spiti districts of the Himachal Pradesh. Means the Po formation is situated in the Himachal Pradesh and the different kinds of the Devonian Carboni Ferris and the Permian exposures or the Permian uh, rocks are occurring along with the various kinds of the uh, fossils and the bones are also occurring in this region. Coming to the part of the Indian subcontinent that is the Deccan Volcanic Provinces that the Deccan Volcanic Pro Provinces or the Volcano Plutonic Complexes of the Narmada Khambat or the Saurashtra regions that the Volcano Plutonic Complexes the Narmada and the Khambat the Narmada you know that the Narmada which is the, uh, the rifted uh, rivers or the river is uh, flowing through the rift zones the Narmada and the Khambat Rift as well as the Saurashtra arcs host a series of the prominent volcano plutonic complexes in association with the Deccan basalt. The Kutch Rifts on the other hand is composed of the variety of the alkaline lavas, dikes and containing the genoliths and the genoprist and mantle nodules are also uh, been collected by the various parts of the Saurashtra and the other parts of the Maharashtra. Coming to the part of the volcano, volcano plutonic complex of, of the Narmada, here we may have a different kinds of the volcano, volcanogenic provinces. That is, that is in Barda Hills, an arcuate body of a, a granophires associated with the rhyolite and the other formations. Girnar complexes, Osham Hills, and in Alek Hills and the Barda Hills are the prominent uh, locations where we may have a different kinds of the formation. This is a Damuda formations and uh, that is a uh, sandstones and other uh, rocks are situated there. Coming to the part of the Siwalik groups, that Siwalik group was deposited in the two coastings up or the mega cycles consisting of the sandstone clay alteration with the lower portions of the passing and gradually into a coast sandstones and in conglomerates. That Siwalik group which is situated in this region in the in the uh, northwestern region of the Indian subcontinent, particularly in the Jammu and Kashmir, we may have a Siwalik group. Coming to the part of uh, the other uh, exposures of uh, the uh, Churanthi River, where the Siwalik rocks have been exposed, and those are supposed to be uh, various kinds of the uh, plain parallel or the other. Uh, ripple and the laminated laminated or the la uh, different kinds of the laminated beds are, beds are exposed coming to the part of the field features of the uh, 
uh, basaltic flows that basaltic flow shows or the lavas refers to the product of the simple eruptive events in which the lava flows are the due to the flow units and the, that the lava flow units may be called as in lobes or the small lobes are called as toes these are the these are the pahohio lava toes and this photo of the 500 meter high stack of the deccan lava flows of the mahabaleshwar area shows that uh, this is a pahohio sheets and the pahohio sheets shows a black scattered uh, other images of in rounded glass inclusion here that is a black scattered electron image and those are the rounded glass inclusion and those are equivalent of the Kilua and the other kinds of the volcanic eruption in the world what are the coming port portions that uh, the field features what are the other kinds of the types of the lava that is a, a aa which can be pronounced as a aha and is in hawaiian terms and which has a different kinds of uh, the flow which shows in uh, rubbly surface composed of the broken lava blocks called as in a uh, clinkers and so on and piaho hivo lavas are in characterized by the smooth and gently and the undulatings are in broadly and humoky surfaces the liquid lava flow is beneath the uh, that is in still plastic crust and the drags of the wrinkles into a that is in a rapestry like in folds which shows that the ropey appearance the next point is the Dabodar Valley and uh, where the most important coal fields are situated which is the region in the Indian subcontinent where we may recover the various kind of the important coal fields can be considered that Dabodar Valley is supposed to be a most important coal field in which the Rani Ganj, Jharia and Bokaro and North Karanpura and a, a Ramgarh and South Karanpura and the Hutnar and the Auranga and the Dhulta Ganj or Jayantia or Shaharaj Puri and the Giridi basins those are the different kinds of the basins in which we may have in Talchir and Damuda and in Panchet formations and those are the different formations particularly in the Supra Panchet formation also we may have the Boda group consisting in Basin Karharbari formation followed by the Barakar and those are having a richest deposits of the uh, coal. This is the stratigraphic sequences of the Son Mahanadi and then the Son Kohl and that is a Damodar and Koil, Raj Mahal, Mahanadi, Son, Satpura and the Godavari. In these different kinds of the rifts or the regions, we may have a various kinds of the lower, upper and the particular the Permian, Triassic and the Jurassic to Cretaceous formations are confined to those kinds of the rivers, particularly the Damodar and so on. This is besides in the coastline alluvium deposits restricted to the numerous streams flowing from the western ghats and, and, the, and the Arabian seas uh, which shows that the different kinds of the formations. So this is the in the uh, this point is connected to the formations of the quaternary sediments in the Maharashtra, particularly the Purna River, Purna River, particularly which shows that uh, the Purna Pranhita and the other shows the vertebrate bones have been reported, so, and elephants are also elephant bones are also uh, uh, reported from these regions. And then Purana, Purana rivers, which is in bank section swimming and gravel beds of the within in quaternary sediments, and those are the different kinds of the bones that have been that is in femur or the distal lifts has been cover, recovered from this region. Coming to the part of the next uh, uh, Proterozoic basin that is in Kadappa basins, which is uh, um, which is uh, different, which is, has a different uh, portions, and actually that uh, area has been covered near about the 44,000 square kilometer and the length of about in 450 kilometer along in arcuate uh, or the eastern margin. This is in crescent shaped uh, Kadappa supergroup and which is uh, situated towards the eastern side of the uh, eastern uh, Dharwar Kreton. And this is the Dharwar this is the uh, this is the shape and uh, the area of the Kadappa basin. That Kadappa basin is further divided into different kinds of the folded built, particularly the Nalla Malai folded built and the other uh, Papagni and so on.
so this is a lithostratigraphy of the kadappa super group that papagni is at the bottom and the and the other particularly the kernel super group is situated at the top coming to the part of uh, the uh, that is a trivendram block this is a trivendram block which is situated towards the extreme southern portion of the pandian mobile belt and those are supposed to be the close bed granites and the other regions which are also discussed earlier coming to the lithostratigraphic of the betul belt that uh, the uh, that is a, this is in protrusive betul belt of the central india and which is in fast emerging as a potential belt for the best metal exploration several occurrences reported from the central eastern parts of this belt including the uh, bhanskapa and the pipharia or the uh, and the gisi and so on so this is in almanis and bargao groups and the uh bhopali groups are the parts and the younger granite is you know pink to gray and informed that is in potassic granites is a part of the lithostratigraphy of the betul super group this is all about the uh, protrusive basin particularly that the protrusive basins we may classify in the two categories that is a is a paleo protrusive basin in which the bundelkhand and that is in bundelkhand craton and in bastar craton and the dharwar cratons which are also occurring and then the uh, meso neo protrusive basins in which we may have a various kinds of the craton uh, whereas uh, the bastar craton is also a part of this and um, that new meso protrusive basin or the meso neo protrusive basins but the windian basins is also a part of the uh, meso neo protrusive basins and we are going to discuss about the vitian super group and in these super groups we may have a different kinds of the different formation particularly that the tidal formations and flat formations and the uh, other formations coming to the part of the uh, that is in kalhari uh, or the kaladgi and the badami formation the same question was re question was repeated in the uh, gate examination gate examination uh, particularly uh, which was connected to the badami basin and the uh and the bagal coat basins was also the part this is uh, situated in the karnataka and those are the archean basement those are overland on the archean basement this is a stratigraphy and the quaternary deposits of the saurashtra where the different kinds of the rocks or the uh milliolite formation refers to a, a to in a literature as a milliolites or a Uh, poor bandar stones uh, those are the most important and striking crystals in uh, deposits in the saurashtra coming to the part of the satpura basins in which uh, the lower gondwana sediments are exposed in the broad syncline those of the southern limb which is in penchkana and in thawa coal fields and a mahapani is located in the northern limbs and this is the satpura mobile belt has also been discussed in the previous lecture coming to the part of the geological time scale and the global standards of the stratigraphy the actually the units of all the ranks uh, are in the process of being defined by the global boundary stratigraphic sections of the point that is a gssp and for the lower boundaries including those of the archean and the protrusive and the long defined by the global standards of the stratigraphic area that is gssa and the geological time scale or the geological time scale which is denoted by the gst and is in representation of the times based on the various records of the earth where the different kinds of the epochs and the eras has been discussed so this is the international chronostratigraphic charts in which we may have a various kinds of the eras and then epochs and the formations and so on and which are having the correlation and the uh, relations with the different kinds of uh, Uh, the formation of the world coming to the parts of uh, the as i previous or a earlier spoken about how the geological survey of india has given the status uh, as a as a national monument status or the national uh, antiquity status to the lonar crater which is situated in the buldana 
Buldana district of the Maharashtra, and those that lunar crater is supposed to be uh, is a only a terrestrial craters, and which has been uh, originated by means of uh, the uh, bombarding of the meteorites, and that geologist has given in certain kinds of the evidences. It means that the lunar crater is just equivalent to a fluidized crater of the Mars, in which uh, various kinds of the uh, uh, revealed shock ejectors were scattered around in 600 meter away from the crater crater and even that the exploration particularly that braxiated basalt up to the 335 meter depth has been found by the drilling that means the two evidences what is a 335 meter depth of uh, that is deeply situated braxiated basalt and uh, the shock ejecta particularly up to the 600 periphery uh, 600 meter periphery of the uh, main crater shows that the Deccan uh, that the lunar crater which is unrelated to the activities of the volcanic uh, provinces basalt flood basalt which is connected to just a meteoric impact and therefore this is uh, the unrelated to the volcanic uh, activities so this is a lunar crater which is known for the saline water and uh, as a monument sites of the indian Ge geological survey of india thank you thank you so much